All right, let's go ahead and create a Django project. And we're gonna be doing this all from scratch. So it's pretty much putting everything together. So I'm gonna close out my terminal window and open a new one. And I'm gonna CD into my dev folder. And I'm gonna go ahead and say make dir. This is gonna be CFE home. And then I'm gonna change into CFE home. And then I'll go do pip env install Django equals equals to 3.0.4. I already know that that's the version I want because of the last video. Um, and then I'm also gonna declare Python and that's gonna be Python 3. And I'm gonna let that install. It shouldn't take very long, but it is gonna take just a moment, so I'll let it finish. Now that it's done, I'll go ahead and activate my pipmv shell. And inside of here, I'll just verify that pip freeze, I have Django in there. Uh, no worries about these errors here. This is probably something you won't see. Now that I've got Django installed in my environment, I'm gonna go ahead and run the command Django-admin start project, and then the name of my project, which is mine is CFE home, and then a period there. The reason I'm putting the period there is because I want it in the directory that I'm in, which we'll see what that looks like here. So I go ahead and do that. If I list everything out, I see that there's a file in here called manage.py, so I can run Python, manage.py, run server. And this gives you an emulated server. So if you go to this URL here in your web browser, hey, hey, there we go. We've got our fresh install of Django working. That process has been roughly the same since Django started. Um, the differences in the commands has been very minor, but overall to start a brand new Django project, it's Django-admin start project, the name of the project and where you wanna store it. So in other words, I am gonna close out that server with control C that kills the server, which it shows you right there. Of course, you could always quit the terminal window too if you wanted, but if you were to make a actual location for the project, you would do Django-admin start project. And then I'll just say some project. And I won't put a period there. I'll just say some project. And if I list it out now, what I see is I still have that CFE home and managed up high. And then I also have something called some project. So if I CD into some project, uh, it is here with managed up high. Now, there are different schools of thought as to how to separate your Django projects. You could separate them based off of the Django version, right? So if a bunch of versions of your project are using Django 3.0, maybe that's where you put a virtual environment is for all of the Django projects that use Django version 3.0. I don't do it that way. I do a different virtual environment for every single project. I don't ever want any dependencies across any projects to conflict with each other. So whether it's Django or any other Python project, I always create a brand new virtual environment. And if for some reason, these virtual environments are starting to get too big for my machine, which can happen, you just delete it. You just delete the old one. And uh, you know, if you forgot, it's just pip v shell. Um, oops, let's exit out of this a couple times. And we'll go into our dev folder, CFE home and pip v shell. This shows me exactly where that virtual environment is. So if you needed to delete that, then we just reinstall it and everything will be right back where it was. So what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and remove that some project thing with remove dash RF some project. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove dash RF this actual virtual environment. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove it. Notice that my Django code is still in there, right? And I still have it activated, so manage.py will probably still work. So let's go ahead and close this one out, this process out, open up another terminal window, CD into our dev folder, CD into CFE home, and then we'll go ahead and run pip env shell and hit enter. So remember, I just deleted that virtual environment. So it actually recreated it. And this is yet another reason to use pip env. I just recreated that virtual environment even though I just deleted it. And that is pretty cool, right? So like if your virtual environments start to get a little bit out of hand, you can just delete a bunch of the old ones and then just run pip env shell on the projects that you're actually actively working on. So then you can do pip env um, 
run Python manage.py run server, right? Uh, and of course, I need to deact. Let's deactivate. Let's just deactivate this real quick. Deactivate and Python uh, pip env run Python manage.py run server. Oh yes, this is a, a silly thing that I did not. Uh, take into account. And that is I deleted the virtual environment, but what I didn't do was pip env install as well. So since I have a pip file, it already knows all the things that I need to use to install it. And that's why it's saying no module named Django. So now if I run pip env run python manage.py run server, it should absolutely work because it updated that virtual environment that I just recently deleted. And yet again, there is Django running. Cool, so now what we wanna do is actually set up a text editor to start working with this project, right? Like I'm not actually gonna be covering building a Django project here. It's much more about setting the environment up to work with a Django project.